Hi there, welcome back to Stellaris Snail Wars. What you see here is our giant fleet. Uh, and Jenith, the home, the last home planet of the Regarians that have plagued us from the start of this Let's Play. They have currently a happiness of 0%. <laughs> Why is that? We have invaded them. To get rid of them once and for all. They were a thrall of... Um, Let's see, the Kalaxinan Restorers, one of the War in Heaven participants at the moment. But as thralls are not going to be helped by their uh, boss monsters, so to say, we just took <laughs> that opportunity and eliminated this really unnerving dot from, from our empire. We now have a united, really growing empire, as you see. We're not as big as the Garapex Galactic Order. But we're definitely growing to a size that is considerable. Now, there's a lot to do after such an invasion. First, let's look at our armies. Congratulate Guy Herbert. He's such a great general. He's a butcher, too. <laughs> yeah, that is something that is helpful for us. Um, if someone um, is um, adept at eliminating the predatory species of this desert planet. Because we need to take this under control. And there's also something going... There's a tomb world here on Ostiak 5. And what we'll do is we will settle there. Now the question is, will we create robots to settle there? I think not. And where will we settle? That's the other question. I think we'll settle on that point. Because we would need some food maybe, if we are not using robots. And so this and this um, would be suitable adjacency bonus um, adjacency bonus areas. And then we'll see. I mean, the Ostiak system is really meant for the Hadnock Prime sector. But it could also go to the Nautilon Seeker. Seekers of Nautilon sector. For its excellent research opportunities. I mean, Look at that. We have two, four, five, six, seven. Seven research there. So that would also be great. But on the other hand, Jenith, as you can see here, has a lot of energy credits and even Batharian stone. So it would probably be better off in the Hadnock Prime Sector. Also, I'm thinking we should rename the Hadnock Prime Sector. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. It was originally named after a system in there, but yeah, now I think is the time we should rename it to Nautilon's Energy, as it's our energy sector. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, there's, there's something to be said. Nautilon's energy is also like a symbol. Um, it's a symbol that the core of our of our um, empire is Nautilon's energy and also Nautilon's different embodiments like the lungs, the eye, Nautilon's flesh. They're definitely uh, the thing. So, and Ostiuk is um, we could remember that system as the last stand of the Regarians of our great triumph. So, um, we'll name it the Triumph over Rage system. And uh, this will be the last home 
of the Rajarian Predator. Yeah. Ha. <laughs> Um, no, we'll we'll call it like the the mausoleum. No, the tomb of Rajarian predators to mark their end. It's not a tomb world, so um, wait, maybe we'll we'll uh, we'll call it the the. The grave of the first predators. As these were the first predators we have encountered in uh, the in the vast emptiness of space. And this is their final post here, like their final independent post. So it's the grave of the first predators. And this little planet uh, will rename in uh, the hope for nautiloid children i mean it's a tomb world um, ah, i mean there must be a more poetic name like um life a new life new life out of death uh, or Nautilon's rebirth planet. As we are recovering this tomb world from the arms of death, it will be the rebirth planet. And I believe I've been building some kind of colony ships, ships somewhere near. Um, let's find out where that is. Have we done that already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something that is hard to find out, really. Oh, here, in Suhiri. Nice. So it's it's coming. And then we'll give that over to the new Nautilon's energy sector. Uh, that's the sector settings. They can purge. They can also enslave now. We'll give them that and... Let's give them that system. So next thing to do is we must send all our fleets back to the old border because we have Tissel and Prime there uh, which has the capabilities to repair um, whoop. yeah they have the capabilities to repair quickly and also to decrease our upkeep cost <laughs> <laughs> significantly for all of our fleets and we will recruit some defensive armies here is that possible yet not yet we'll first must embark then we can go for some defensive armies we hope they will not uh, revolt then we'll look at this small content slaves suppress everything Yeah, it's time we, we purge these predators once and for all. But we cannot do it really now, as like the whole universe will battle us then in time. <laughs> ah, let's look. Here's one of the one of the fleets of the wall. Yeah, a very small fleet. Uh, they are probably going to die uh, over the conflict of. Um, with the with the Levis, and they, yeah, they, they still like us even if we're genocidal at the moment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this request to become signatory is something we should consider. Mm, yeah, I mean we can still colonize then. We cannot declare any more wars. 
but we'll have a giant protector. I'm not sure this is worth it because the AI protecting you has always been a problem, but at least it might, may threaten off the Calaxenum restorers. But they are usually, they are at the moment they are busy with a war in heaven, or at least these guys are busy. They are participants in the Levis Wall War. But they are, they are only, yeah. So they are not participants of the war in heaven. They are just a thrall, I think. Are they a thrall thing still? No. They're part of that big federation. So that's okay. Yeah. So first we should really colonize this system, Nautilon's rebirth, and then we must really look to make our fleet fit for anything that might come. So let's continue here. Non-aggression pact broken. Yeah, these guys. And we have found an anomaly there, which we have started to research already. Very cool. And I hope there's something coming. Let's let's see. Um, we'll build a spaceport there. Oh, we are already building a spaceport. Nice. Yes, Yuhiri has built the colony ship, Acquirer class, the NFS Harvest. Let's send it over here to Nautilon's Rebirth. And uh, we want to settle on this place. I think that's the best one. And we'll call it, of course, Nautilon's Rebirth. There we go. We could terraform it though. But <laughs> I don't really want to terraform it. I mean it it would be nice to have. We have missing resources climate restoration. Yeah, um We could terraform it, but um it's much more fun to have a tomb world there and to have that rebirth symbol out there. Like it's from a game me standpoint, it's suboptimal. From a storytelling standpoint, like being able to settle on a on a wasteland, a, a fallout kind of scenario, that's pretty cool. Right? <laughs> I I think that's extremely cool. And there there are all kinds of events that can happen on a tomb world. That are really exciting, so... <laughs> the Nautiloids are not aware of it, and they would avoid it if they knew. But for now, this is the triumph of Nautilon over the desolate wasteland that was probably produced by the Regerians long ago. At least that's what the Nautiloids think, and they're of course right. They're of course right. Speed up a little bit more. Let's see what will happen there. There's the colony ship coming. Oh my god, failure! Despite repeated attempts, science officer Svetlana Kamensky and the rest of the crew, the NFS astute, were unable to locate the reflecting object that was reported in the initial survey of Civ 5. Of Civ 5, yeah. Perhaps it was just a sensor glitch. Oh no. Svetlana, why why haven't you found something? We had such high hopes. Then go here and survey that system. I hope yet that you'll find something else. The war? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the debris, to analyze that debris is a waste of time. <laughs> There's nothing that could teach us, probably. So let's see, are there any uh, borders changing? 
in here near the unbidden also want to know what this area is who is there what is there it has been eating at the moth people autocracy if you look at that they were once like this size about and now they are disappearing from here most of the galactic stars of the stars have not been able to combat this place So they might be part of the Matrisius guys, but not really. And there are potentially habitable worlds there still. Which of course is, is good for us. Let's look at the Kurgans though again. They are at war with... Yeah, they are in the war in heaven. What are they? They are a thrall under the Calaxenan Restorers. <laughs> there are so many thralls and s so few signatories of the Levis Mediators. Let's see, they, they will probably lose. Maybe this is a chance to become signatories. Let's see, the Equis are part of their signatory thing. The Equis League, the Crude Council and the Assembly of Gox Dominions now. Um, these are relatively big and we have the equis that are relatively crap <laughs> from a gamey standpoint like they have separated from a league of rainbow light that pursues peace and they are probably like some yeah they are fanatic militarists and materialists <laughs> and they have chosen the path that we have also considered going to the levis mediators for protection then we have the crude council that are pathetic federation builders though they're on the other side of the spectrum they are actually fitting the levis but at the moment the levis might use oh i'm sorry ah uh, flipped over my my timer ah uh, let's see <laughs> let's play on a little bit uh, at least we're in the plus again. We cannot expand our fleets at the moment. That would be impossible. I'd be happy to maybe reach some more progress here, but yeah, look at that. Our fleet has been repaired. Everything's coming to order again. Uh, let's see the transport fleet. Where is it? Is it? Ah, uh, it should go here. Should enter the orbit. Further save us some resources. And as you see here, colonization has started. Cost us a lot, but still, it's going on. Defensive pact. Hmm. Ah, our genocidal stuff is biting us soon, soon. It, it might be impossible to have something going with them. Ah, uh, yeah. Truce from breaking alliance. Rapax Galactic Order. The number of defensive pacts, yeah. So they don't mind that much about our genocidal tendencies. That's good for us. <laughs> Let's also look at the power score again. Mm. Not that bad. I mean, being equal to the Fung friends and the Christuna is definitely a plus. Better than uh, the League of Rainbow Light. And um, even almost equivalent to the Space Roaches now. And the Stars of the Stars. Yeah, we're we are gaining ground again. Once we are developing all the nice new planets we have <laughs> now got... <laughs> That might even increase. So let's let's do that. Let's see what our sectors need to do that. 
first uh, let's give the Viter Prime some energy credits. Then we'll give the Seekers of Nautilon some serious minerals. And then the Nautilon's energy sector too. Yeah, I mean, the, the genocidal stuff will pile up now. <laughs> because we have started a lot there. And as long as this is um, still positive, we can still flee to them. Which we might actually do once the, the purges are fulfilled, we might go into the loving arms of the Labis Mediators to become fighters for peace, and at least for our safety. <laughs> Uh. Now, there's a certain date nearing. We may soon be able to attack the League of Rainbow Light again. They now have a defensive pact though with the Stars of the Stars. Which is really, really unfortunate. as they are quite close. Yeah, our hope now lies with the Unbidden uh, to eat up the star spawn of Cthulhu and maybe then goes to the stars of the stars. Well, Dune has been fully surveyed. So we cannot attack the League of Rainbow Light for now. Cannot attack the Wall either. As this would mean too much war. Have a look at the Umpani. Can we declare war on them? Yes, we could. That would just be very, very bad for us. Um, the truce from breaking alliance. We cannot declare war before the truce has ended. They have been broken. They have been breaking the alliance. These guys, these guys. Why? Why have you been doing that? They've established the colony Nautilon's rebirth in triumph over rage. Now, finally. <laughs> finally. The glorious episodes of the snails. Um, battling, yeah, battling the the Regerians have come to an end. There are no more Regerians that are not under our control or dead. At least I think that. Let's let's look at the Thel planet. No, nothing. Can look at the armies. There are elder things here under the control of the wall. There's Aldor. There's also the wall. Yeah, so there's Sawa. The consciousness of Tharbig, member of the Condine Pact. And there's, oh, there's someone new. The Rakudans. So all under the, under the Restorers. That's really odd. Like, they're taking their chances. They're going Xenophile. <laughs> huh. These boundaries, I'm losing my mind over the, the connections. I mean, we're isolated, but on the plus side, we don't have war with any of the participants. And we can go still go to the Levis Mediators and uh, they must be at peace. We can still confirm, so it would still be possible to become a signatory. Peace in the galaxy is our foremost concern. Have you come to sign the treaty? Yeah, as soon as the purges have been have been ready. Let's look at Valdun. 
Nice system. Uh, we can now send back our ship. Um, this is in Nautilon's flesh. It's in the lungs of Nautilon. And the astute will go back to the great research planet of Whiter Prime. Let's look at the surface. Yeah. Definitely good here. I mean, they have remade some of the really odd things here they have made but still it's a good research output and we're definitely supporting it the observatory we can go for a solar panel network here and all is good so I'd say happy gaming to you see you in the next episode of Snail Wars, where we make the galaxy safer again, when we... I don't know what we'll do. I mean, it is highly de dependent on what the big, fallen, awakened empires will do, on what the Unbidden will do, and on what the, the giant players like the Mytherine, the Rapax Galactic Order, will do. So... It will be fun. There's fun coming. <laughs> let's let's just call it fun. Uh, that that removes the scare. There's fun coming, and I wish you a lot of. I'm not sure I should w want to wish you fun, but yeah. <laughs> Hope you had fun watching, and uh, yeah. See you in the next episode. This is Emmanuel Can signing out.